Hey everybody, Professor Snart, uh, just saying hello and uh, taking a look at our due dates as we get actually towards the end of our course, hard to believe. Um, we've just finished up essay one. You should be getting uh, that uh, feedback return from me in the form of some, maybe some brief text comment, but uh, a video of me basically doing this with your essay on the screen and me talking you through some of it, which will hopefully help you, you know, see mistakes that you made in that essay. But the point is really honestly to um, to point to strengths, but also some weaknesses so that we can carry the strengths over to the final essay and of course maybe uh, fix some of those basic mistakes and get them right or just kind of improve on some weaknesses. There's different ways of, you know, um, making mistakes for lack of a better term when you're writing. Some of them are just stylistic things which improve over time and some of them are just like basic like right or wrong, maybe grammar things or MLA things. Um, so it's obviously important that you get that grade number and that you look at the feedback, but really it's most important that you uh, follow up if you have any questions. So if I've identified something that was incorrect, and if you can see that, then that's great. You just fix it for the final essay. But if you're still unclear, it's really, really important that you follow up. So in some ways, um, I'm not going to debate the grade with you. Uh, that's not what I'm suggesting here but um, the end of essay one isn't necessarily the end of the conversation about improving your writing. So you can always get in touch with me and we can uh, make sure that you like have the resources or understand um, what, how to improve those things for the final essay, which is um, truthfully where the bulk of the points for the course are. Like I've explained before, we kind of work through all of these smaller things we test them out by putting it together in essay one, which itself is worth a considerable, considerable amount, at least relative to some of the other things. But then the big points are really built into the final essay. So we spend the tail end of kind of the last, you know, third of our class um, here, even though it's basically just a week and a half in our compressed time frame, uh, working towards uh, the final essay. So we're into unit nine now which is due on Thursday, which is where the final essay is assigned, but of course the whole essay isn't due on that due date. Um, we get the ball rolling here, and then we have a couple of other steps we work through until the final is submitted uh, no later than July 1st. So it's important to realize that they can't accept work beyond the end of the course, basically. Um, and if you keep on track here uh, and work sort of efficiently, um, it's uh, entirely possible that you could submit, you know, well before relatively speaking, well before um, this Friday uh, due date, and then you're done with the course. Pretty nice. Okay, so let's look at the pieces that we move through. We'll do sort of a holistic approach here. The essay is assigned in Unit 9, and you start to begin to brainstorm some possibilities. Uh, we fundamentally do a comparison essay. I'll look into Unit 9 in just a sec and walk you through that. So you're just getting the ball rolling, and I realize that um, the assignment in Unit 9 is to suggest a possible topic but that's a really quick turnaround between finishing up essay one and now trying to think about the next essay. So it's just a really preliminary thing where you're just getting something down as a possibility. You might change your mind, you might change it a little bit, you might change it a lot, um, but at least we're moving the ball a little bit forward. So I know it'll feel really rushed, but that's just kind of the, the way we get things started. Um, okay, then we have a, a period here for unit 10 where you and I have the opportunity to meet individually. We can do that face-to-face, -face, we can do that virtually. It only takes about 10 minutes or so, so it's not a huge time commitment, um, but we talk about your final essay. The ideal, truthfully, is that you have a pretty good draft put together by whatever conference date you've signed up for, and again, I'll show you that in just a sec. Um, so you can kind of give yourself like an artificial due date so you really get a whole bunch of it done, especially if you're one of those people, like most of us, who does better with a concrete due date, like it has to be done here, not just, well, work on it whenever you have some time. Um, you can trick yourself by making this your due date, not right, the actual due date. Um, that also gives us something to like physically look at. I can not assign a grade to it, but I can sure point out what's working and what's not working so I can sort of pre-grade it. So it's really, really beneficial the more you've got done. If you're still brainstorming or kind of swimming a bit, well, honestly, you should have been in touch with me before this, but that's what we'll talk about. So it's not like I grade you on how much you've done necessarily, uh, but it certainly behooves you, it's in your best interest, to get as much of that essay done as possible. There's another discussion board that really just keeps the ball rolling from Unit 9 as far as 
what's your topic or thesis, what primary texts are you discussing, what are some of the secondary sources you've got uh, so far. So again, just kind of keeping you accountable as we move forward. We do a brief and very focused peer exchange. So a lot of people have had kind of mediocre results with peer exchange, including me, I'm not gonna lie. Um, so this isn't one of those things where you just give your paper to somebody else and they kind of like look at it and give you some random feedback. Um, we're actually gonna use a checklist that I'll show you in just a second to, uh, to, to uh, kind of guide our peer feedback. So it's a lot more efficient, it's a lot more streamlined, and the feedback that you get, I think is a lot more useful, let's say, targeted. Uh, sometimes you get great peer feedback um, returned if you just do a more open-ended thing, but a lot of times people aren't totally sure if they should be saying that something's right or wrong, and so they're, they lack the confidence to, to make that judgment call, and so they sort of flounder a little bit and nobody's very happy with the whole process. So I've, I want the peer exchange in here, but we're doing it in a really targeted and, like I said, hopefully streamlined and useful way. And then that brings us to unit 11 when you're actually submitting that final polished essay, hopefully revised based on the draft that you put together for our student conference, and then maybe feedback from the peer exchange, feedback from me, obviously. And so it's in really good shape and you're not scrambling on Thursday to put it all together, but you've had all of these kind of accountability checkpoints to really be working on it. So there's kind of like no excuses for fumbling the ball uh, that close to the goal. <laughs> if you, I think I've used like, what, nine football metaphors so far? Anyway. Um, okay, so let's take a quick look at some of the actual units here. <clears throat> so unit number nine gets us into the assignment itself. We have a new reading, uh, the play Death of a Salesman. It's in our textbook. I'm inviting you to read and actually you can just follow the link or to, re to watch as you read. You can follow the link here or just adjust your browser security settings which I will try to do. They sometimes change them all up and it goes all crazy. <clears throat> so you'll notice that the video now shows up. If you want to do that, you can check the browser help link. But again, you can just follow the link here and uh, watch it on Hulu. So it's about two hours. It follows the script of the play almost verbatim. There's like a couple of word changes that you might not even notice. Um, but I don't want you to just watch. But I also don't expect you to just read because it's a play. It's meant to be seen. And there's some time shifting where the main character, Willie Loman, the salesman, um, is in his present, but is sort of having flashbacks to his past, and those things kind of overlap. And reading it, it can be a little confusing because you're not necessarily sure who he's speaking to or which time frame we're in. But when you see it, it's actually pretty clear. So I'm all for like watching it as you read it. Um, and I'm going to suggest that this is a great uh, text to use for the final essay because it's new, so you're not repeating yourself. There's lots of great research about it, which is really easy to find on the databases. There's lots of kind of dynamic themes and interactions going on. So there's just lots of good material here to use. You don't have to necessarily, um, but I'm going to strongly recommend that you do. There's a little quiz like we've done in the past. Um, not a whole lot of points attached to it, but really kind of trying to draw your attention to some of the main themes in the play. And in fact, maybe these will spark some ideas for your final essay. Okay, speaking of which, the final essay assignment. Five to six pages, so it's not like all of a sudden we're doing 20 pages, we're just doing something that's slightly longer. Uh, again, double space, that doesn't include the work cited. Uh, one uh, difference here is that we are doing uh, three appropriate secondary sources, and we've talked about this, appropriate, they have to be relevant, so they're discussions directly of your primary texts. They're not just general web stuff, they're not just tangentially related, so all those rules still apply. We're still writing, of course, a literary analysis since that's the kind of writing that we've do been doing so far. Um, so nothing much has changed except we're a little bit longer. We have a few more sources involved. Um, here's some uh, library assistant stuff. And I think the main change for us uh, is that in the first essay, I gave you a set of possible topics to work with to kind of get the ball rolling for you. So I did that very first brainstorming step in some ways for you, or at least a little bit of it. But here, you're going to de uh, develop your own topic. So I like this because it allows you to be more creative. You can do something that kind of speaks to you. You're not just fulfilling the assigned requirement kind of a thing. Um, so it can be a little bit harder to start because you don't have that initial like, right, momentum from me. But um, I think it ultimately produces a better experience and better essay because you're more personally invested. You're just more personally interested in it. Okay, so here's the deal. 
we are writing a comparison essay, not a contrast essay. We don't want to know why things are different. We already know things are different. We want to know why they're similar. And we're going to do two works of, for lack of a better term, literature. So one should be from our syllabus or included in our textbook. So kind of that more official definition of literature. Remember, we talked about this way back in unit two, all those weeks ago. Um, and I'm going to suggest that for uh, one of your choices, it would be good to do the play for the reasons that I already mentioned. The other uh, primary text that you use could be, and this is the sort of the more creative and personalized part, um, almost anything that you can think of. It doesn't have to be literature like with a capital L. It doesn't have to be from our textbook. It can be a song, uh, some other piece of music, a piece of art, uh, a novel or short story or television show or movie that you're familiar with. So we're really, really broadening our definition of literature, trying to see how that kind of um, surprising work, like a, a, a contemporary movie, for example, shares something in common with a more official piece of literature, for lack of a better term, like Death of a Salesman, the play. And so how would you compare those? Well, you can compare them in terms of, do they cover similar themes? Um, do they involve similar character relationships, like like um, parent-child or father-son types of things, or that whole family dynamic, which is really important in Death of a Salesman. Um, and so it's important that you take a look at this uh, very short slide, so I think there's like two or three slides, about how to organize a comparison essay, because it's really important that you do it effectively. And we're gonna use what's called the point by point versus this block comparison structure, and it's fairly straightforward. But you'll see, uh, understanding the basic, like how to formulate a comparison essay, will probably help you to begin imagining how you could take two works of literature, or two like works, that seem on the surface really different, different time periods, different authors obviously, like different media, one's a play, one's a, a TV show, whatever. Um, so they seem really different, but your essay is interesting because it shows how in fact they have all of these uh, similarities. And again, understanding the structure can help you actually do the brainstorming piece of it. Okay, so that's the topic, that's the assignment. Uh, and then what's due for this current due date is just this brief discussion board asking you to, like I said before, just kind of start brainstorming. So like, what are some possibilities? So your first step is really to do the reading slash watching. You want to familiar, familiarize yourself with the assignment so you get it. And then of course, part of that is the whole comparison essay thing. And then the tentative topic. I don't grade on the quality of the topic because we're just getting things started here. I just want to see some investment of time and thought and some possibilities. And then of course you're replying to two other posts and maybe in fact something that somebody else says, you're not going to steal their idea, don't do that. But maybe just the, the whole approach that they take, is that's the light bulb that goes off for you and then you have that idea as well. So this is really, like it says, tentative. It's not a contractual thing, you're not locked into it. It just forces you to get something started. Okay, let's look really quickly at where we move from there. We have then our opportunity to meet uh, through a conference. You can sign up here through the wiki. You'll notice some fairly limited meeting times. Obviously, if those don't work, just be in touch with me and we'll figure something out. People have kind of crazy schedules in the summer, so I don't list a whole bunch of random times and just hope they work. I list a few, if they work great, if not, then we work something out, so just be in touch with me. We have another discussion board, very similar to the Unit 9. We're just kind of right scaffolding. We're moving the ball forward again, football metaphor, uh, or soccer, if you've been watching uh, Copa America, like me and my daughter have. She loves saying Copa America, now I do too. Uh, but this time we're talking about sources, so obviously we need to be thinking about those three secondary sources, filling that piece in as we go too. Okay trying to stay under my 15 minute time limit. Then we have the peer exchange. You'll find yourself in a group. It's just basically a discussion board. And then that's pretty much it. The final essay is due in our, uh, basically our final unit here. The outside date, absolute latest is Friday, July 1st. But truthfully, if you've worked conscientiously through these steps, you can probably get this done earlier than that Friday. And then it's out of your hands and into mine. And you can enjoy the rest of your summer uh, free of English 1102. Hopefully it hasn't been a bad experience so far, but it'll feel good when it's done. I know. Uh, okay, so that's lots to process here, but we're at we're in the home stretch, if you want to put it that way. A different sports metaphor. Um, and as always, if you have questions about essay one, questions about the final essay, or anything in between, 
be in touch with me.